might be a long-winded response, so just bear with me, train of thought, all of that, you know? The best way I can answer this is if you've seen the show Insecure, you know, Issa Rae, which if you haven't, what the fuck are you doing? I can tell you the specific episode, season finale, Kelly is pregnant and they're like, Kelly, I thought you said you didn't want any niggas kids. And she's like, I don't want any niggas kids. I want this niggas kids. And that is it for me. I have never felt more seen and heard in the episode than that in particular moment. You see, my mom was a teen mom and she explained to me the harsh reality of being pregnant, how hard it is for child labor and raising a child on your own. She had my sister and she was 18. And she was a nurse, so I got all of the gory details, like all of them. But I'm gonna tell you the fact that stuck with me and that is being a black woman, my mortality rate is four times higher than that of my non-black counterparts. So do you honestly think I'm just gonna risk my life to have a random niggas child? No, that's why I'm 31, not married with no children. I don't plan to settle, I know my worth. So it's easier to just say like, you know what, I don't even want kids if it's not gonna be with the right person because it would not be worth it to me to do it alone. Sorry, I don't know what the fuck that filter was, but it was freaking me out. And I really got something to say for you fear-mongering Kevin Samuels wannabe niggas in my fucking comment section that I'm personally blocking. Part of me sincerely wants to delete the video because I would rather die than allow my moment of vulnerability be used to weaponize and fearmonger other black women. Y'all are fucking trash. Um, half of you wouldn't have a shot with me in hell. I, my shoe collection costs more than your annual salary. You, you don't make enough money to even breathe in my direction nine times out of 10. But this isn't to knock the city girls because I honestly am starting to understand. Here's why. Men put so much of their mental well-being into how much money they're able to provide or their ability to provide and how much money they're making and whether or not that makes them eligible to date. When a man has too much money, he can treat women like objects and like they're just so dispensable, right? I've been there, I've dated rich men. You date a man who may not be where he wants to be financially and it's all of a sudden, I gotta focus on my career. I don't have the time right now. I just gotta work. I'm not financially stable enough and da 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 to you know, give you the life I think you deserve. And you probably make enough to support yourself so you're not even really trying to date him for his money. But because he seems he doesn't deem himself worthy, he would have just wasted your time anyway. I feel like if I'm gonna get my feelings hurt and have my time wasted, I might as well have a broken bag with interest. This, this is where I'm at. <laughs> so we're going to preface the main part of this conversation by speaking about fear mongering, settling, and why did I choose a little girl with the pouty face? One, chose the little girl with the pouty face because this is many women in the dating scene, right? They have their ideals, they have their understanding of not settling, they have their ideas of what they won't do and what a man should be, and they go date after date, man after man, not getting that, and then throwing a fit because of their own ideals, right? They're throwing a, 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 a fit, an adult temper tantrum, because of what is not happening because of what they won't settle for. No one is telling you to settle, including, and I'm specifically bringing this up because of the young lady speaking about the word settle, right? And what she won't settle for. No one is asking you to settle, ma'am. But that does come at a cost or a price. And that's not a threat. And that's not attempting to fear monger you, which you also mentioned. But it is literally telling you, well, that comes at a price. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with telling a person that walks into a store, hey, these shoes cost this much, as you mentioned in your video about Birkin bags, right? This this bag costs this much, which, by the way, you don't just walk into stores and buy Birkins, but, right? This Birkin costs $25,000, $50,000. If you understand the concept of a Bentley costing $350,000, how do you not understand the concept of, I will not settle, okay, well, this man costs this much energy, this in looks, this in height, this in weight, he costs this in demeanor, he costs this in femininity. 
And maybe he costs this much in peace of mind and career and all of that. If your, if your list of things that you will not settle for is as long as a scroll, then you have to understand that there are men, primarily the men that you're probably attracted to, who list might be as long as a scroll also. And there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with you wanting a particular type of man that has a particular type of look with a particular type of lifestyle and has a particular income. But understand that man also has standards. He has ideals. He has things he wants and doesn't like also. And so we'll pause right there. Young lady, you might want to reconsider what you mean by settle and what it means to have someone attempt to fear monger you. And here we go with the rest of my commentary. You don't even make enough money to breathe in my direction, she says. Now, <laughs> you know, this is some very interesting stuff. We see her triple and quadruple down on some of her rhetoric from later on in the first video I covered, right? Now, she says um, some of these men are weaponizing her her um, moment of vulnerability against other black women. She essentially gives us the sentiment that we've heard from, I don't know, every woman ever in history, which is, I'd rather cry in a Bentley than cry in a shack, right? Um, pretty much, I, we, we understand now that much of her um, situation is because of the type of man she wants, right? I don't want a nigga's kids. I want this nigga's kids. And, you know, we understand that sentiment. Um, and it's, it's understandable, you know, the, the, every, every person has been rejected or at one point in their life or feel some type of loneliness. That's understandable. But what we have now is women essentially calling men trash when their situation doesn't turn out the way they want it to be. This young lady um, mentions Kevin Samuels and calls men, probably specifically black men, want to be Kevin Samuels ass niggas, right? And excuse the N-word um, for all of you um, who have children around, my apologies, but I'm just quoting this young lady, right? And we understand we also understand that this young lady does what many, many, many women do, not just black women, women in general, which is essentially boil men down to nothing more than walking wallets and then insult men or any man who sees himself as more than that, right? Once again, you niggas can't even afford to breathe in my direction, right? My, my shoe collection is more worth more than your entire salary or something along those lines. She said, right? This is this is the modern day woman, you guys. Right? Black, white, Asian, Latino. I mean, excuse me, Latina. Right? Black women just happen to be the loudest about it. But this young lady... It, what's beautiful about the internet is that more and more women are exposing themselves. And telling us what they really think about men. And what they really think about men is that you're a utility. You are nothing but a walking wallet and over-glorified guard dog, right? A person here to assuage her fear and insecurities about her own life and decisions. To occasionally be a sex toy. And once again, to be a walking wallet and over-glorified guard dog. That is your job as a man. Oh, we can't forget the um, cheerleader, right? The, the cheerleader, yes. So this young lady gave us another moment of honesty in a different way this time, right? This this one was filled with bravado and, you know, a lot of ego in this one, a lot of pride in this one. But this is what it is. And I want men writ large, black men specifically, to understand this is the dating scene. This young lady has a moment of vulnerability and she cries because her talk situation fell through. And then she immediately turns on her pride and her ego 
and goes to insulting men. <laughs> right? Goes to insulting men, black men specifically, because, you know, 95% of us, she probably is not interested in. And this goes to a larger point. We need to donate a lot of money to Everlast or whatever other um boxing glove company, company that sells boxing gloves, and just give it to women so they could street fight it out for the top 20% of men, really the top 10% of men that they want. So many people, women in particular, either don't understand the concept of a pyramid scheme or never played the game musical chairs. They really don't understand what they themselves and their own ideas of what a man should be is pricing them out of the game. It's not men. It's you. Your own ideas, like this young lady said, right? Can't afford to even breathe in her direction, is what she says. Right? Well, in that case, young lady, what do you think the men that can't afford to breathe? Well, actually, she said it herself. She would rather be mistreated by the baller guy than have the not so baller guy say, you know what? I, I'm I'm not certain of this. My my money is not essentially my money is not good enough to buy you right this young lady kind of is telling us she's looking to be bought so apparently she's doing well in her life like like she said in the previous video she's traveled you know around the world by herself twice or she's been out of the country by herself twice at least right so she's doing well for herself financially but yet she's still looking to be bought Per her own sentiments, I am not making this up. This this is her own, you know, views. So, when we see men who understand that they stand on top of the food chain and that 80, 90% of women are chasing after them and we see how arrogant they are and we see how they use and play women, let us not forget that there are plenty of women that fully understand what they're dealing with. And they're perfectly okay with dealing with that because they want the lifestyle. They per they are perfectly okay with being side chick number three or four or five. Because for them, it's about whether you can afford them a certain lifestyle. If you can get them a certain bag. If you can make a couple of payments on their car. That is what's important to them. And, and I understand, especially for black men, we work on our character and our personality and our, air quotes, our swag, right? But what we're finding more and more from women writ large, black women specifically, is none of those things actually matter. They have fully bought into the neoliberal market worldview of relationships and marriage. And they have taken the concept of there's no romance without finance and supercharged it and said, you are essentially nothing more than a walking wallet. And if you can't buy me, there is no use for you. And this is not Mr. Z saying this. Decipher this young lady's words. This young lady is saying this. And that's unfortunate, right? That that is that is truly unfortunate. So as we witness the marriage rate go through the floor, right? Plummet through the floor into the basement. As we watch as the child birth rate plummets through the floor, through the into the basement. As we watch men and women grow a divide with each other. As we watch college educated women many of which are going to attempt to date and marry up and actually land that but the ones that don't would rather be single and alone some of which will have children some of which will not understand that for many of them it is a conscious decision that if they can't have mr baller dude who essentially buys them then they would rather be single and we have to understand that
That is a conscious choice. And there is nothing wrong with that. But as a as someone said under in the Twitter comments under this video, if this young lady in the next decade at 41 years old, we find her still single and angry and maybe miserable, let no one say it. I'm paraphrasing now. Let her. We don't want to hear anything. And what Mr. Z is saying that will be very unfortunate. It will be on her, her decision. But you can't complain that you couldn't find no man when you have shown us that these are your sentiments about men. And what's happening is a lot of people, women in particular, are exposing themselves and their ideas about what men are. They're not saying how that money's important and they understand it and, you know, this is something that they uh, want a man to come to the table with, you know. No, they're essentially saying, no, you, you're a walking wallet. If you're not coming with that money, then there's no need in even entertaining you. And what I'm saying is that comes with consequences. Some of those consequences is that you're going to be single for years on end. Some of those consequences is that you yourself are essentially going to price yourself out the game. Some of those consequences is that you might not ever get married and might not ever have children. And what this young lady is telling us, at least in this video at the age of 31, is she's okay with that. And let's see, first, if she ever gets married, then, you know, then she would have won, at least for the short term. But let's see, maybe in the next decade, if she's still single... Maybe she'll have a change of heart. Maybe not. You know, and Mr. Z, pause right there. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. The young lady said, you know, essentially most of us can't breathe in her, breathe in her direction. We can't even afford to breathe in her direction. And her shoe collection, <laughs> you know, is more than many of us make a year. And she, you know, her something about Birkin bags and whatnot. Just, you know, the standard um social media black girl social media talking points nothing nothing to see here nothing to see here the the standard you niggas ain't on my level type talking points right the standard um black man bashing right or insinuating that you worship kevin samuels if you even tell the sister hey you know maybe you might want to th rethink the way you view men in relationships so you know, it's 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 standard it's standard talking points, but it 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 is something to take note of when we see this over and over and over again. Black women crying about being single while simultaneously saying, You niggas ain't on my level. Fascinating. <laughs> you niggas ain't on my level, but goddamn I'm single. This is this is depressing and lonely. And I'll end it right there. I'll pause right there. All right, y'all, let me know what y'all think in the comments.